you may be asked to give some proof of these circle theorems. This is quite a difficult exercise in mathematical thinking. Usually constructing triangles can help quite a lot with these proofs, as then we can use the properties of triangles to make deductions. For example, here we can prove rule 6 by constructing triangles where the two tangents meet the circle. We can create a base of a right angle triangle. What I mean by that is if I join the centre of this circle to where the tangents meet the circle, like this, then split them down the middle to make two triangles from this point to this point, like this. You can see we've got two triangles and we can start using the properties of these triangles. We know that tangents meet the radii at 90 degrees, so I know that this angle here is 90 degrees, and I know that that angle there is 90 degrees. Then we know that both of these have one side that is the radius. They also share a side. Therefore, rule six, the tangents from the same point to a circle are equal in length, must be true. Another example will be rule seven. The angle inscribed in a semicircle is always a right angle. This one can be quite difficult to prove. However, we could split this larger triangle you can see on the diagram into two smaller triangles. And then from there, we can deduce the properties of these triangles and infer onto the bigger triangle. So to start with, we can label the lengths of some of the sides. We know that this side is the radius, we know that this side is the radius, and then the side that we just inscribed will also be a radius. From there, we can start thinking about what types of triangles these are. Well, both of them have two sides that are the radius. So two sides are the same, therefore they're both isosceles triangles. So the angles at the base of an isosceles triangle are the same, so therefore this angle is A, this angle is A. And then for the other triangle, we could call this one B, and we could call this one B. Then if we try to add up all the angles within the larger triangle that was originally there, starting with this one, we'd have A, plus this one, which is also A, plus this one, which is B, plus this one, which is B. And then we know that angles in a triangle add up to 180. So this equals 180. We can simplify this a little bit because we've got two A's on the left hand side and two B's. So 2A plus 2B is 180. And then you'll notice that the angle that we're actually talking about, the angle from here to here, we need to prove that is 90. You'll notice that that angle is A plus B. So if we can figure out the value of A plus B, then we can prove that that angle is 90 degrees. Well, from this equation, we've got 2A plus 2B. We want just A plus B, so let's divide the equation by 2. And of course, we're going to do that to both sides. 2A divided by 2 is going to be A. 2B divided by 2 is going to be B. And then 180 divided by 2 is going to be 90. So A plus B is 90. The angle that we were talking about that was inscribed inside the semicircle is A plus B. So therefore, that angle is always 90 degrees. So again, a really complicated circle theorem and not immediately obvious at all how to prove this one. However, we can deduce from some relatively basic properties about triangles, a very, very complicated circle theorem. Why not try the topic exam on our learning platform? Here you can answer a series of questions and get instant feedback on how you've done, both in a written format and a video format, as you can see here. So here's an explanation of the circle theorem. And then if you're unsure on how to apply it, there's a video solution of exactly what you need to do to solve the problem.